Hello, VD of Video Games for Fun here. I figured I want to do an upload today just to let you all know I'm still on this channel, preparing for the October stuff, and I haven't done a first impressions video for quite some time, so I could do something a little different, but this is surely no ordinary first impressions video. I am a big Metroid fan, and when this game was announced, I was super excited. This is the first time in... how long has it been? We get a Metroid game on a console and a fresh new 2D entry. I didn't necessarily expect any Metroid Dread or Metroid 5 or sequel to Metroid Fusion, which is actually the first Metroid game I ever played, very closely with the first Metroid Prime. Once I booted up the game, the title music and the story intro music sent some chills down my spine in a very good way. Metroid is back. I've played it for two hours, so I'll give you my initial thoughts. I find it is easy to compare this game to Metroid Fusion and the 3DS remake of Metroid 2. In fact, I kept on procrastinating from playing the 3DS game until recently, and I'm glad I played it, because it gave me a good idea of what to expect from the gameplay and controls. While I prefer controlling Summers with a control pad in the 2D games, like with Super, Fusion and Zero Mission, the control stick works okay, and I find it more comfortable to pull off melee counter attacks on the Switch Pro Controller rather than with the 3DS buttons. Even with the fluid movement and controls, this game seems to be quite a challenge. Difficult, but not unfair. The first boss took me a few attempts to defeat, and I'm not talking about the M.E. robot things that everyone who has seen the promotional materials for this game surely knows about. There is, sort of, a way to get rid of them, which I won't spoil, but you will be running from them and getting caught by them a lot. The dread of the title definitely makes sense. At this moment, I appreciate that the game is challenging, for it could be a little annoying or frustrating at times. The story seems to be a good follow-up to Metro Fusion. In fact, key moments of Fusion are shown at the beginning with shiny new graphics. Metro Fusion remake, maybe? <laughs> Lol. Plus, we get to hear what the computer sounds like if Fusion had voice acting. Any objections? Not really. The graphics are nice, and I really like the background details. As expected in a Metro game, the sound and music make for a good atmosphere, even though one of the music tracks seemed a bit quirky to me. The cutscenes at the beginning could be interpreted to make for a slow beginning, but the cutscenes are too long and can be skipped with a minus button after you first see them. I'll also finish this all off with the progression side of things and the upgrades and moves. I won't spoil any of those that I've got so far, you're better off discovering them for yourself. Of course, you have to get all the upgrades yet again, and you look for missile expansions and energy tanks. One gripe I do have is that, for me, it feels like it's taking a bit too long to get the upgrades or moves that are staples of the series, but at the same time, this allows for some cool new moves to take center stage. I'm not sure if a 3DS remake of Metro 2 has a sliding ability, but it is what you have from the beginning to navigate tight gaps and enemy encounters. At the moment, I am a little lost in the second area of the game, but it wouldn't be Metroid otherwise, though I know some people have issues with that aspect of the series dating back to the 8-bit and 16-bit entries. I'm looking forward to going through the rest of the game. What do you all think of Metroid Dread so far? Let me know in the comments or, or come chat in the upcoming Dark Souls stream I'm doing not long after this upload, which I meant to do last week, but I needed some time to recover. Have a good day or night or whatever it is, and I'll see you soon for more October themed content. Hopefully I can finish off the next video before... Oh, dang it. And Emmy caught me. No!